I'm Dr. Gimbel, demonstrating Trench Divide and Conquer. I'm using Vision Blue to demonstrate the Capsule Rexus. Helon 5 is my preferred viscoelastic. You can see that I puncture and create a V to start the tear, and then continue as usual, stopping at sub-incisional area to re-grasp and then carrying on to complete the tear, moving the tip of the forceps in a direction different than the point of tearing, but to guide the tear in the desired diameter and direction. This is a 26 gauge cannula. I go right under the cortex under the capsule to separate cortex from capsule and then use that tip to pull the nucleus away from the equator and rotate so that I can spin the nucleus at least 180 degrees, sometimes 360 degrees to make sure that all attachments to the cortex are severed. This is a Hefliger cleaver which is my preferred chopper. In a very dense lens, it could be longer at the tip for more complete fracturing, but this works and is my preferred uh, configuration for the average nucleus. You can see I'm nudging the nucleus a little away so that I can sub-incisionally This I call downslope sculpting. Sculpting needs to be deep centrally. It does not have to be a long trench or trough. To get that split from the center of the nucleus out to the periphery, then subsequent chopping will be complete because the epinucleus centrally, posteriorly, has been split. So these subsequent fractures have somewhere to complete into with that original complete split. Not unusual as you see here for subsequent fractures to not want to be complete through the epinucleus so it's important to stay deep in the nucleus with the tip as further tissue is engaged so that one can achieve that complete fracture if at all possible. Second instrument can be used to further separate the apex if it's not fracturing easily because of the consistency of the lens. I like small sections because less material escapes the tip. And you'll notice that with Helon 5 a very cohesive viscoelastic with low vacuum settings, about 110 millimeters of mercury. The viscoelastic is staying in the eye so that this is a very small compartment. The second half is similarly fractured and removed. The next case shows a small pupil case, and in this case we're using Crater Divide and Conquer. This was the original Divide and Conquer that I described. Removing a core of central nucleus in very dense lenses, 
to be able to get deeper into the lens to be able to sculpt more deeply. These techniques are good to utilize on a routine basis with short sculpting but deep sculpting so that they can be utilized in the small pupil case to not require iris hooks. So in Crater Divide and Conquer I like to remove more than just a trench. So I turn the nucleus and keep sculpting and nudging away to be able to sculpt deeper to get that shelf underneath the phaco tip. Again, the depth of the sculpting is what's important to be able to achieve a fracture. In Crater Divide and Conquer, I often will go to the edge of the lens with the second instrument to start the fracture because here we don't have the borders of a trench to push against and these are often very rubbery lenses that are hard to fracture posteriorly. So to start in the equatorial area with the second instrument chopping and separating and then turning 180 degrees to try to complete that fracture through the posterior plate as well as the periphery. I've edited out a little just to get this whole case on this short segment and now we start the segment removal. And the same principles apply as with the trench divide and conquer. Notice that I'm keeping everything down deep actually in the lens plane even below the iris to keep the tip of the phaco away from the viscoelastic to maintain the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber to protect the cornea. And the second instrument is also used to keep the tissue at the tip or position it against the tip and to keep it down and deep and away from the viscoelastic where I don't have to come up and get it with the phaco tip and risk starting to remove the Helon 5 viscoelastic. In a lens this dense, quite often by the end of the case, the viscoelastic starts to come with the material but we can see that it's still holding the lens material down away from the cornea and with this low vacuum even in this dense lens we're able to remove the tissue. This is the ozel tip of the Elcon phaco emulsification unit, which also does not propel the material away from the tip as much as traditional ultrasound. You can see the lens material is starting to move around a little more, but it's still not coming up against the cornea. If you watch this again, notice how 
A little the phaco tip moves away from the center of the pupil. And that's why I like to use this routinely, this technique routinely, so that when I get in a small pupil case, it's familiar maneuvers to be able to work in the center of the pupil and not require the the iris hooks for expanding the pupil. Once we get down to smaller sections of the lens, as you see there we can pull it to not have to go under the iris to get around the edge of the lens. So this is taking longer than under high vacuum, but I like to protect the cornea with this highly viscous viscoelastic that even during phaco can be kept in the eye because the low vacuum does not remove it from the eye like high vacuum would with a cohesive Uh, viscoelastic. And a dispersive viscoelastic would not keep the fragments from uh, moving around in the anterior chamber as we see this viscoelastic is doing. I do use the dispersive viscoelastic and if I do use a viscoat, I like to use the soft shell technique with duovisc, as described by Steve Arshnoff. The soft shell technique maintains better uh, visualization because the viscoat pushed up against the cornea on a regular basis is just a shell there that has a smooth interface with the aqueous and less likely to trap this, uh, the lens particles and uh, distort the view. Now we're getting down to the last segment. We have to start thinking more about posterior capsule as we get to the last segment. Notice my second instrument is always under and a little ahead of the tip as I'm fakoing to make sure that if the capsule does come up with surge that my second instrument is protecting it. And if it the second instrument is not moving, it won't rupture the capsule, even though the capsule may come up against it. So both instruments in the center of the eye, second instrument underneath, and now as I'm having to come up a little more, you can see that more of the viscoelastic has been removed. 